All right, folks, we are officially moving on to day 25. So within Job Controller, if I scroll down to my store action, in the last episode, we did learn how to send an email, which is great. But one problem is, well, at the moment, it's all happening synchronously. Or in other words, we are making the user wait for however long it takes to deliver this email. So if it takes maybe two seconds to deliver that email, then the user has to wait two seconds for a response. And I get it, uh, two seconds isn't a very long time to wait, but on the other hand, as it turns out, it's an extremely long time to wait. So yep, this just won't do. Instead, it would be nice if we could take that job, and in this case, the job is delivering an email to you, and we're just gonna throw it into the background. All right, we'll get to that in just a minute. But for now, I want to immediately respond to the user. All right, let's figure out how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna close this out, and our first step is once again our configuration directory. And you can see we have a config file for our queues. Now, as it turns out, there are a variety of services and backends to assist with your queues. And we can see a list of supported connections here. So sync, uh, that's synchronous. That means run the job as part of the current request, sort of like what we've been doing already. Uh, but this can be useful for testing or local development. Next, you can run your queues using the database driver. And believe it or not, I think this is a good way to go for a long time, maybe longer than you think. But otherwise, if you need something a little more robust, you could reach for Beanstalk, uh, SQS, or Redis. Okay, so let's see. Right up here, the default queue connection is in fact the database driver. But notice it's looking for a queue connection environment uh, variable. So if once again, you go into environment, Let's scroll down to Q, and yeah, you could rewrite this to whatever you want to use. So if you want to support Redis or SQS, you can swap it out here. For now, though, I'm going to stick with database. All right, let's switch back to config. Now, if we scroll down, here are the various uh, connection settings for the driver we choose, in this case, database. And you'll learn more about some of these options in the future. But for now, notice the table section here. So of course, if you're gonna use a database driver, then you need some place to house or contain uh, all of your jobs while they're being processed. And right now that table is called jobs and a migration for that table comes with the Laravel out of the box. We've already seen it in table plus. All right, let's keep going down. And uh, yeah, there's some sections here for queue batching, how to handle failed jobs. And once again, for a database driver, it's going to look for a table called failed jobs. And again, we already have access to that. So if I switch back to table plus, here is the queued jobs table. And then we also have a failed jobs table that comes with Laravel out of the box as a migration. You can review it here. Let's go into database, migrations, and it should be this one here, create jobs table. Yep, you get this out of the box. Okay, so all of that to say, if I return to job controller, when it comes to mail, it's really easy. All I have to do is change this send method to Q. So now I'm saying, no, nope, don't deliver this email as part of the current request. Instead, I want you to throw it onto a queue. Okay, so I'm gonna explain that more in just a second, but why don't we try this out? To the browser, I'm signed in as John Doe. Let's create a brand new job. How about Laracas Instructor? And this one pays, how about 70,000 USD? All right, let's submit that. Now, We've created that record in the database. We can see it here. But what about the email, the confirmation email? Well, let's switch over to MailTrap. And my inbox is empty. Let's do a sanity check. Refresh. Do it three times for good measure. Nope, no email. Hmm. So what is the problem here? All right. I'm going to try to explain this in a simple and easy to understand way. But in order to do that, I got to tell you a story. But don't worry, I'm not 80. It's not going to take 20 minutes. Uh, it'll only take a moment or so. Okay, so a really long time ago when I was in high school, I worked at a copy and printer place called Kinko's. Uh, it was eventually bought by FedEx, and today it's known as FedEx Office. But yeah, way back then, it was known as Kinko's. Okay, so my job was cashier. So a customer would come in and they'd say, hey, I need 300 copies of this flyer, and I would be responsible for that. However, when that job, and that's kind of a key word there, the job is making 300 copies of the flyer. When that job would come in, 
Yes, I could have walked around to the copy machine and performed that job for them. But think about it. The customer would have had to wait for me to complete that job. I go over to the machine. Maybe somebody's using it before me. I wait for them. I then perform the copies, and then I return to the customer. And I say, all right, here you go. A second possibility, though, is I say, okay, 300 copies, and I hand it to a person whose only job is to make copies. I hand it to, to Stan. Stan, can you take care of this for me? And immediately after I do that, I turn back to the customer and I complete their order. All right, so you know what we did there? That was a real life queue. A job came on and I threw it to a queue. And in this case, that queue was the table right behind me where Stan, another worker at Kinko's, can be exclusively responsible for knocking out those jobs. Oh, and by the way, that term worker, it's another keyword. All right, so you see what I mean? You already know what a queue is. You already know what a job is. You already know what a worker is because you see it in your everyday life. So the problem is we've thrown a new job onto this queue. Hey, I need somebody to deliver this email for me. But if I turn around, there's nobody working in the back. There are no workers at the moment. So let's fix that. Open your terminal and run PHP Artisan queue work. Aha, notice processing jobs from the default queue. All right, and sure enough, we had a job to deliver an email. All right, let's switch back to the browser. Come back to MailTrap, and there we go. Open our email, and everything works just like before. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, if you intend to use queues, then you also need to have one or more workers to work on the queue. And that's exactly what this queue work command does. All right, so that means, yeah, uh, when you push your project up to production, you will need to run this command behind the scenes. And don't worry, there are dedicated uh, tools and services to help with this. For example, there's one tool called Supervisor that will ensure that no matter what, this queue work command never falls over. It's always running behind the scenes. All right, so let's do this. Let's switch over to my routes file. And once again, I'm gonna build up a test route just so we can play around with a couple things. So when we're done, I will return done. And I want to play around with dispatching a job because of course, in real life, you will be doing much more than delivering an email. There will likely be a variety of uh, processes and actions you're performing that take a bit of time, especially these days when there's so much interaction with AI. So first step is the dispatch helper function. This is really cool. We call this a queued closure. So why don't we just say for now, log to a file, hello from the queue. All right, so as we learned in a previous episode, logs will be added here, storage logs, laravel.log, and let's clear this out. All right, so let's give this a run, but before I switch to the browser, I'm gonna close out this queue work command just for illustrative purposes. I can close it out with control C. All right, so back to our demo project. I'm gonna go to example.test slash test. We get return done, so now we have dispatched a job, but yeah, once again, if I switch to my editor, yeah, we don't see anything, just like before. So I'm drilling this into you. That's why I'm doing it two times now. Think about it. We dispatched a job. The job was thrown onto a queue. And if it helps, just think of a queue as a stack of papers. And each paper represents some kind of job that needs to be performed. The only problem is there's no worker to handle those jobs. So nothing happens. All right, let's get to work. Think about it. You're, you're the nasty boss who says, get to work. Get to work and they start working. All right, so they run this queued closure, and if I switch back, now we see the log. All right, so this is really helpful. If I come back to my routes file, sometimes you wanna trigger a bit of logic that happens outside of the current request, but it's fairly basic, and you wanna perform it in line. You don't wanna complicate things. All right, so in situations like that, the dispatch helper function is a great way to go. And you can even do cool things, like I can delay this. So I could say, delay it for five seconds. All right, let's give that a shot. I'm gonna close this out. I already have my queue work command running, so I don't have to restart it. And if I switch back to the browser, let's give it a refresh. Yeah, if I come back, notice one, two, I'm switching away to make it refresh. Three, four, five, there it goes. So we dispatched a job that was delayed by five seconds. And this can be really helpful uh, for example, if you want to send a welcome email 15 minutes after the user signs up, that would be one way to handle that. 
All right, but anyways, let's head back to our routes file and discuss dedicated job classes. Now, I'll switch back to the terminal and hit Control C. Uh, one thing I could imagine doing is what if after an employer publishes a new job, we take care of translating it to a dozen different languages. And maybe we want to use artificial intelligence to, to handle that task. Well, we can definitely do that. But once again, it takes a bit of time. So let's instead throw that job onto a queue. I'm going to run make job. Hmm, what should the job be named? Well, how about translate job? Okay, so now it'll be placed within a new app jobs directory. Let's have a look. Let's go into app, and sure enough, you have a new jobs folder, and there we go. All right, so we see a bunch of traits here. Uh, mostly, you can ignore those, but of course, each one adds just a little bit of behavior to interact with the queue, for example, or to serialize your eloquent models when they are um, added to the queue and retrieved from the queue. But anyways, for now, all you need to know is this handle method is where your job logic will be triggered. So for example, if I just wanted to once again say logger hello from translate job, I could do that. And you know what? This is a great way to learn. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to go back to my routes file. And this time, I'm not going to use a queued closure. I will dispatch a dedicated job. I'll do that by referencing the name of the class, translate job, and you'll see that I have a dispatch method. So let's run that now. We'll give it a refresh. And then, of course, from the terminal, I will start my worker, get to work. And now if I switch to my log file, sure enough, we do see hello from translate job. All right, super cool. All right, so back in my routes file, yeah, it doesn't really make sense, does it? To dispatch a job, and by the way, I will clean that up, to dispatch a job, but then provide no indication as to which job we are referring to. And yeah, we're getting a little inception here. I didn't get inception. We have two different concepts that have the same name. We have a job listing for our application, and then we also have a queued job. So uh, granted, a little less than ideal for a tutorial, but you get it. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna fix this by tracking down a job listing from the database, and then I will pass that into the dispatch method. And let's clean that up. Okay, so now our job listing will be passed to our job class. Yeah, even as I say this, it's confusing, but um, yeah, that's just how it turned out. All right, so I will inject this, public job job. But as I do this, we can see my editor is squawking. And again, that's because we're colliding a little bit with our queued job interface. So as it turns out, if I go up a level, it looks like there already is a job property here that refers to the queued job rather than the job listing. So why don't we just rename this to job listing here? All right, so now, yeah, at this point, you would reach for whatever AI service you have. Maybe if you have an AI class, you could call a method like translate, and then you would reference your job listing. Uh, we only have a title here, but yeah, in real life, you'd have something like a description, and then you'd provide a, a list of languages that you want to translate that to. So for example, maybe if we're just translating it to Spanish, this could be our API. But yeah, the entire point is, this is potentially a long running process that should not take place as part of the current request. So instead, we locate it within a job, and then we dispatch that job onto the queue. For now, we will simulate that by saying log translating this job listing title to Spanish. All right, and let's give it a run. Give it a refresh and now return to laravel.log. And oh, actually I forgot to mention this. This is a really good uh, error that we can discuss. So notice it's still displaying the old value, hello from translate job, instead of our new version, uh, which you see here. All right, so what's the problem? Well, keep in mind, whenever you run this queue work command, it loads everything into memory. So since we loaded it into memory, we have changed the logic for our job and it's not yet reflected. Okay, so this means whenever you make a significant change, you should restart your queue worker. And yeah, once you push to production, you will set that up as part of your, your build or your deploy script. Make sure you restart your worker. So run it again, and this time, if we give it another try, back to my editor, open laravel.log, and sure enough, we can see, all right, we are translating the lawn service manager job to Spanish. It works. 
All right, so that has been your introduction to Q's episode. So yeah, I hope now terms like Q and job and worker aren't quite so scary anymore. I don't know, I, I find that in the early stages, we, we are all masters at terrifying ourselves when it comes to terminology. But yeah, if you can just find a real world uh, corollary, correlation, corollary, what's the right word there? Correlation, I don't know. If you can find a real world comparison, uh, it instantly makes sense, don't you think? All right, so let's be done with that. In the next episode, I want to introduce you to Veet. I'll see you then.